This is a quick video of two of my watches. Uh, the one on the left is the Breitling Blackbird A13350, and the one on the right is the Amiga Speedmaster Moonwatch Calibre 81861, manufactured roughly about 2005. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to do, um, well, uh, we're going to have a look first whether the actual watches are magnetic. And I've got um, an ISO app and a compass, and we can have a look at that. Then we're going to chuck them onto the Welshie 1900 uh, timographer um, and see how they're running and whether they're in need of a, a service. Um, I've had the watches quite some time, um, don't really use them that often, only weddings and funerals, and any if I'm going out somewhere nice. Um, so they probably are in need of a service. Uh, they've never been serviced long and I've had them 10 years I believe, so as far as I know. Um, so we'll have a look and see how they uh, how they time out on the timographer and also have a look at just how magnetic they are. Both watches are fully unwound, um, so we'll test that. If they are overly magnetised, I have got a demagnetizer, so we could try that as well. This is a free app called Lipsy. Um, it was designed for measuring the magnetism on uh, watches. Um, it's free on ISO and it's free on uh, Android devices as well. Um, effectively you calibrate it, just follow the instructions um, and then bring your watch close to it. Now I have got a fixed magnet here which will just use it to test it, so even at quite some distance that's a magnetism detected. Um, if I get the watches, now it says not to touch the screen and just to wipe over. So if I get it, so that's probably oh about five mil off the top of it, and it's a magnetism detected um, on the Blackbird. Let's do the same again, and about the same again. It's about about five to, five five to ten millimeters away. Okay. Now I do have another app. This is another free app on the ISO, uh, it measures micro teslas. Um, the 50 where it's pointed at the moment is the Earth's background magnetic radiation. That figure will change depending where you are in the world. Um, if I bring a fixed magnet, uh, such as this, anywhere near this, the sensor, as you can see, uh, it's all going off the scale. I mean, obviously this is a magnet, so about two, three centimeters away, it's off the scale. If I get the Speedmaster and we bring that close to it, um, we're about five millimeters off the glass there, and there is a little bit of movement, not a great deal. So, although the other app was showing it, was, there is magnetism there. Um, it's a very small amount, based on the reports that we're getting there. That one seems a little bit higher. Uh, but again, it's 10 microteslas at the most really, which is uh, it's probably a little bit more there, nearly 20. Um, I have got a demagnetizer or a degausser, um, so we'll degauss them while they're fully unwound. Uh, uh, using the demagnetizer, I've demagnetized uh, the, both the watches, the simple process of just pressing that button and while it's on, basically. There's a couple of ways to do it. Some people say hold the watch there for a couple of seconds and slowly lift it away. Other people say to hold it at this distance and move it backwards and forwards across the across it. Um, I haven't found either the way would really which works any better than any other really. Um, I've demagnetized some of my uh, sort of tools that I've got and things, and it seems to work that okay just by lifting it away. But after running the demagnetizer and then putting them back on the app again, uh, absolutely no difference. So I think it's sort of the background internal magnetism of the watches really, to be honest. So I couldn't actually find that it made any difference whatsoever. I did it a few times demagnetizing. Um, and as I say, it, um, it made very, very little difference whatsoever. So I would say the watches are roughly, whatever the magnetism they've got is what they've got really. Uh, so next thing we'll do, we'll move on to um, doing the uh, timograph function and we'll just do a quick test on them and see if the watches are in need of a service. First test we're going to do is the Amiga uh, Speedmaster Moonwatch 
We're going to time it over three minutes. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you watch the three minutes of it, but we'll do the initial setup first on the uh, timer graffer. So in this, if we need to go into the lift angle and on the Amiga it should be set to 52, 50 degrees, sorry. Let's turn that back down. Uh, period will leave us 12 seconds, everything else will leave us standard. So we now go back to start. And we'll stop that there. Stop that. So a rate of one second per day, probably an average of around two or three seconds per day. Amplitude 272, which I think is okay. Uh, the BE is actually bang on. Um, so yeah, I'm, I think I'm quite happy with that. I've uh, disabled the chronograph function because it says to for more accurate reading. Um, let's try the Brightling. Oh, with the bright line, we need to change the lift angle. Uh, we'll set it back to 52. I don't know why I can't seem to find anything on the internet about what it should be. Um, so well, we'll leave it at 52. Again, the chronographs are mean disabled, um, and we'll just run the test again for three minutes um, and see what that one does. Okay, we'll stop it at that. And, uh, I mean, saying zero seconds there at that time in point, but I'd say an average of minus two seconds per day, amplitude 280, and the beat error 0, 0.0, which is perfect. Well, I hope that gives you a little uh, insight into the use of the Welsh uh, 1900. Um, I did actually test the watches at the 45 the 19 rotate and there is there is a difference it would seem uh, when I leave it ticking along at night by the side of my bed I should leave it in this angle at this angle it was losing four seconds at this angle it was about two and that one it was about uh, six I think it was uh, um, for the Speedmaster uh, the bright lean really didn't affect it a lot in either direction to be honest it seemed to be uh, very good way whichever direction it was in the beat angle dropped um, and the amplitude uh, of at any other angle than uh, flat um, but in hindsight now um, they both seem to be okay um, reasonably happy with those um, do like these two watches they are um, quite nice dress watches uh, you know I can live with lit losing um, anything between I don't know, minus uh, 10 seconds a day, that's not an issue to me. Uh, but two nice watches in my opinion. Um, and the uh, Welsh 1900 Timographer, that was, uh, just reassured me there they are keeping good time.